back to helicopter lessons in 10 minutes or less. It's Jacob here and this video subject is all about mast bumping. So let's get to it. Now mast bumping can be a sensitive subject for some because it usually deals with expensive repairs of rotor components and in some cases catastrophic component damage resulting in death. That said, it's a subject that requires understanding if it uh, affects your helicopter. I say if only because it only applies to a semi-rigid or a teetering rotor system. Now, if you're not familiar with what exactly a semi-rigid rotor system is, I'd recommend watching my Types of Rotor Systems video. I'll put the links in the comment, uh, as well as it should pop up in the video um, in the top corner of your screen right now. But mass bumping, just like the name implies, is when the main rotor hub contacts or bumps the, uh, the rotor mass. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So just like from the Types of Rotor Systems video, uh, where I drew the difference in between uh, the systems, the semi-rigid system with the mast attached to the hub, typically is underslung. Uh, due to its more favorable center of gravity by being underslung. Um, but what happens is you eventually get to a point where this teeters enough where you have main contact. Now it's pivoting across this point right here. And if it teeters enough, just like I said before, you can potentially have contact with the mast. And at this point right here, uh, that contact with the mast, you can either have uh, some damage, you can have rotor separation in extreme cases, uh, but mast bumping can occur for, occur for a few reasons. Uh, but we'll cover those in this video. The first reason that you could potentially get into mass bumping is going to be doing during takeoffs and landings on slopes. All right, taking off and landing uh, from slopes. If a helicopter attempts to take off or land to or from a slope, there can be points where the cyclic limits may be reached. So what does that look like? Well, let's say we have our sloping terrain right here. We have main landing gear, making contact. There's the fuselage, the mast, and now we have the rotor system. As the, uh, uh, the pilot applies cyclic in the direction of the slope with little or no collective applied, it's easy to see how this, uh, this can happen. You go from a, uh, a system like that that's very uh, rigidly staying uh, perpendicular to the mast, and now it's getting to a point where potentially getting into some kind of mast bumping. Now to help prevent this, be sure to have some kind of collective applied prior to displacing the cyclic for a slope takeoff and try to avoid landings in which you have the, uh, the maximum cyclic displacement in any direction. Uh, so typically if this is the freedom of movement of your cyclic in any direction, if you're getting to a point where your cyclic is all the way in one direction and you're trying to land on a slope or you're trying to take off from a slope, you may find yourself getting into some kind of mass bumping. Now, this is probably the, one of the more common uh, conditions. Like I said before, uh, you're getting to cyclic limits. It's really not going to be too severe because um, you can make corrective action for it um, by either uh, choosing a different place to land if you land to a slope or applying a little bit more power prior to displacing your cyclic. But like I said, so you're getting to your cyclic limits with uh, little or no collective applied. All right, so the next part uh, of mass bumping is going to be uh, far more severe, and this is going to be your low G flight, typically associated with a pushover maneuver. All right, so low G flight is usually accomplished uh, via a pushover or leveling off uh, or diving following a cyclic climb, and it's going to look something like this. So you have your helicopter flying along this way. The helicopter initiates a cyclic climb, gets to the top, and begins to give forward cyclic or level off. And it's at this point right here where you're going to have a low G condition. Now, you'll notice these maneuvers are demonstrated in the intro video prior uh, to the Apaches conducting their diving rocket engagements. Now keep in mind that those systems are articulated and they're able to handle that. Uh, rigid systems are also able to handle this, but semi-rigid systems cannot handle these type of low G conditions. If a semi-rigid attempts this condition, you could have catastrophic damage resulting in the main rotor uh, completely separating. So how does that happen? Well, as the helicopter uh, reaches the crest, uh, you're going to get into a, a type of weightlessness. Uh, as you near the zero G uh, point of your perch. The main rotor thrust at this point is going to be drastically reduced as it unloads. Now the tail rotor still provides that thrust to offset the main rotor, 
uh, but now there's nothing for it to counteract, so the aircraft begins to side slip and roll towards the right. Now, the pilot sees this and it sees this right roll and tries to correct with a little bit of left cyclic, but this has little or no effect because the main rotor is unloaded. So what does the pilot do? The pilot applies even more left cyclic and the rotor reaches its uh, flapping limit. Now the rotor hub and the mast, uh, depending on the severity and how much dis displacement you have in the cyclic, potentially get in a condition where the hub and the mast make contact. And if the force is sufficient enough, uh, you can either bend or break the mast, resulting in the, uh, the rotor um, separating and the fuselage falling to the ground. So in extreme cases, you're having this rotor separation. Now the way to prevent mass bumping for semi-rigid uh, rotor systems is just avoid these pushover conditions altogether. But if you do happen to find yourself in a condition where you uh, maybe you get the feeling of weightlessness, a little bit of right roll, uh, things on the dash start to float a little bit, immediately and smoothly apply aft cyclic. So you want to apply that aft cyclic and establish some kind of level level flight. And by all means, do not reduce the collective at this point because you want the rotor to be loaded. You don't want it to, to unload while you're making these corrections. All right, so that wraps up mass pumping. Uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe below if you like the video as well as uh, leave a comment. But thanks for watching. And once again, I'm Jacob, and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. As always, safe flying.